Gallimera, 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 good morning, good morning. And as you can see, you're joining me again from the rear balcony. It seems to be a, a, a location at the moment because it's just so hot with the sun at the moment. Uh, and it's there is a slight haze in the sky, I've got to be quite honest. But other than that, there's no cloud to, to speak of. Uh, can I just thank Amanda for her concise weather forecast? She says, morning, Ginge. Uh, Thursday's weather. Uh, we're still on yellow alert for wind. Sunny and very warm. Temperature's 32 degrees. However, it's going to feel like 37. She says, have a great day. Also, just be aware the local fire brigade here issued a fire risk warning uh, for very high from tomorrow. Uh, and they say people are to stay alert for fires. I thought I might have seen one yesterday actually going into work around the back of Sylvie, but I couldn't be 100% sure. I thought nobody should be burning stuff at this time of the evening. But anyway, just be very, very careful when you're out and about, especially with your cigarettes. Please don't flick them out of your car as you're driving along. Also, if you're having a barbecue, make sure that you've got some form of extinguisher standing by, just in case your barbie gets a bit out of control. And uh, also as well, if you're going out for a picnic somewhere and you put your bottles and your glasses down on the ground, uh, make sure you keep an eye on them because the old magnifying glass effect can uh, take place where you could inadvertently cause a fire. And also, if you do break some glass, once again, make sure you pick it all up. Uh, you get all the bits because, again, a piece of broken glass, that also can set fire uh, to uh, the area. And at the moment, as you're probably aware, it is still... A bit of a tinderbox even though we did have some rain the other day um right um something i'll need to address at the moment can i just thank all those people that were tuning in yesterday evening uh while we were streaming from uh magdalena's i've got to be honest and i've been talking to people all over sylvie uh yesterday the internet in sylvie at the moment is absolutely shocking um don't ask me why last year it was absolutely fantastic but people are saying doesn't matter where they are in Sylvie at the moment, the uh, internet there is not performing at its best. So whether something's happened somewhere, one of the relay stations is not running well. Um, I do apologise yesterday if I suddenly seem to disappear or as I noted when I checked Mixcloud, multiple uh, broadcasts where basically it had been going in and out and re-clicking in. Uh, so I think at the moment I'm not going to be doing any live streaming from uh, uh, Magdalena's until obviously there is an improvement in the internet. Don't worry, uh, beatsradio.co.uk. I'm still going to be producing the shows uh, for Beats Radio from in Magdalena's in front of the live audience, but they will obviously be recorded um, uh, so as not to put any pressure uh, on uh, an already uh, fragile internet up there in Sylvie. Anyway, can I just say thank you to all the people yesterday uh, who came uh, into Magdalena's. We were really quite busy and I was told at one point after midnight we were one of the more uh, busier places in uh, in Sylvie. Whether that's true or not I don't know but people come in as they wander in and out saying about how you know what it's like in the other parts of the town. Uh, we seem to be very, very respectable last night, which was great. And can I thank the lovely Dutch couple uh, who gave me my first bit of fan mail for the season, uh, Pia and Kevin. Not very Dutch sounding names, are they? Pia and Kevin, uh, who absolutely loved the music last night. Uh, they were choosing a few tracks uh, as well. And uh, I was playing quite a bit of Dutch music last night, which was kind of fun as well, uh, which made it all the better. Right. Um, Let's have a look at what's going on today then uh, as to who's coming here to the island. I do know we have a friend arriving today, Steve Hinkling, coming in. Uh, and I will be back down the airport again. I've been down the airport twice this week. Uh, so I was down there yesterday with Jane. Jane uh, had to do some work in the morning at the airport. so <clears throat> And it was her day off, basically. So I decided I'd go down there and I'd sort of help her out a little bit uh, before we obviously went off for the rest of the day. Uh, once her job down the airport was done. So uh, again, the feeling I got at the airport, a bit of a buzz down there. Quite a few people coming through. Um, obviously, not as many British as we'd like to see. Other nations coming through. A lot of Italians seem to be hanging about. 
Um, but uh, today's arrivals then that we've got at the airport, uh, we've got uh, two flights in from Austria, we've got two flights in from the Netherlands, we've got one in from Hungary, uh, one in from Germany, only one, weird, uh, four flights in from Italy uh, and one from Brussels. And yes, we have got four flights in from the UK. Now I'm going to tell you now, uh, it's complicated with what's going on with flights in the UK, but at the moment, this is what is on the boards of the site that I look at to check on arrivals here on the island. So I do know uh, these might be changing even as I speak at the moment. So the program should be, there should be a jet to in from Birmingham at 12.40. There should be an easy jet in from Liverpool at 13.05. There should be another jet to in from Stansted at 13.35. And then there should be another jet to tonight from Manchester at 20.30. In fact, uh, when I'm meeting uh, a good mate off the flight from Liverpool at five past one uh, this afternoon so with, uh, with EasyJet, so hopefully he's going to turn up. So just be aware, at the moment, it, the flights are in a bit of a flux at the moment, especially with the British market, with everything that's going on. I think a lot of it is they're finding difficulty filling flights at the moment uh, with supposed Freedom Day in the UK, which is not turning out to be too much of a Freedom Day. It's more a Freedom Day on a tag, I think the best way to describe it. Uh, you're not totally free. There's people monitoring you. Uh, so again, uh, you've got to behave. But anyway, uh, that's the way I'm feeling it is at the moment. Right now, when it comes to COVID in the last 24 hours, I'm afraid our numbers in Greece are not looking good again. Uh, new infections at the moment is um oh so no sorry i rephrase that our infection rate is down uh, uh from yesterday from yesterday yesterday i did say that we had a high of uh, 3565 across the country today that has dropped quite significantly uh to 2972 new infections across the country um entries into the country there's been 19 new cases being identified at checks into the country that was up on seven on the previous day now when we look at the stats around uh the ionian and also as i have been doing these last few days looking at mykonos's stats as well because again uh we could be guided in curfews and things like that because of what's going on in mykonos in comparison to our stats here Mykonos had 39 new infections yesterday. Lefkada had no new infections recorded yesterday. Uh, Corfu had 31 new infections recorded yesterday. And also Kefalonia, no new infections have been recorded there. However, unfortunately, Zakynthos has had another 17 uh, new cases reported in the last 24 hours. That means for the month of July alone, uh, we've had 117 cases uh, here on the island. Um, and again, uh, that means that since the beginning of the year, we've had 629. And when you think that we've had 117 cases in July and yet in June, we only had seven, uh, we're just fingers crossed uh, when we're not going to get too closely looked at and there might be a change in our status. And remember, we are in orange within Greece and obviously we're in amber within the UK. We were in green in Greece and uh, the last thing we want is uh, for us to end up in red with the UK. So again, keeping a very close eye on these stats at the moment uh, to see how they plan out every day. Now, when it comes to deaths across Greece at the moment, deaths are down. Uh, yesterday reported there were nine new deaths across the country. Today, only three new deaths. That means the total death toll since the pandemic started is now 12,870 people. Again, 96% of those people had underlying health conditions or were over the age of 70. And uh, once again, our condolences to the families that have lost somebody at this time as well. Right. Um, when it comes to critical cases here in uh, Greece, in the ICUs, Unfortunately, that number is up a little bit. OK, yesterday I reported 121 new cases across the country. Now it stands at 125, of which 76 are male and 49 are female. Once again, the average age of people in ICUs at the moment across the country is 67 years of age. And 83% of those have got underlying health conditions or are over the ages of 70. Right then, today's news then. Uh, believe it or not, in the last couple of days, we've had two drownings here 
uh, on Zach Inthos. A uh, 67-year-old foreigner described was pulled yesterday morning from the sea uh, in uh, the Lagana area. Uh, he was taken to the hospital where he was uh, later pronounced dead. There was also a 65-year-old also uh, who drowned again. He was swimming in the area of Laganus. Uh, this uh, tourist has been confirmed as being from the Czech Republic. Uh, he'd obviously uh, d confirmed to have drowned. And uh, this event took place on the Tuesday. Uh, and again, just this morning, uh, the Coast Guard, who are responsible like for the beach areas and around, they actually issued a warning, again, for people to be very, very careful when they're out swimming in the waters, just to be careful, uh, because obviously uh, this has been very unusual to have two drownings in a matter of a couple of days uh, here on Zakynthos. Uh, whether they were heart intact induced or anything like that that's not been made very clear but once again if you're out swimming please 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 be very careful and one thing i have noticed about a lot of the people from central europe they're bloody good swimmers they seem to swim out for miles uh, and all of a sudden a little head will pop up somewhere so if you're out in a boat somewhere just be aware that these people they love to swim and they will go way way out and i'm talking all ages not just the youth but also older people as well. Right, um, in the context as well today, uh, there was uh, the police issued a, a statement this morning to say they've been out and about in Zakynthos in the early hours of today, and they've been serving fines in the areas of Lagana and Kerry. Uh, they said that they've uh, closed down businesses and issued fines for things like standing up, moving around inside, and giving people seven days suspension. So they, they have been confirming this. They also said on Wednesday they were out and about again, and they'd also issued fines of 2,000 euros and suspensions and closures for seven days uh, for customer service indoors where they haven't been checking their customers coming inside to make sure that they are uh, either uh, fully vaccinated. Remember, you've got to be fully vaccinated to be go able to go inside a venue, inside the areas, and uh, they've been fining businesses uh, in these areas again. So the police are out and about doing checks, so just please be very careful. Uh, they also said as well, across the Ionian, uh, for the same period of this morning and yesterday, uh, during the same period, seven violations were found in Corfu, seven in Zakynthos, three in Lefkada, one in Kefalonia for the non-use of masks by, uh, by uh, employers, uh, employees uh, in stores, i.e. in bars as well. So once again, make sure you've got your mask on if you're working with the public. I pain in the arse as they are, uh, we still have to wear them, otherwise you're looking at a 300 euro fine uh, if you get pulled up all right, by the police. So once again, please be careful, they are out and about and they are looking. Now, um, interesting article I saw yesterday in a local press from the Amira uh, about the difficulties of tourism at the moment in Sylvie and the main problems obviously due to the pandemic and also to the entrepreneurs themselves who are trying to do everything to make things run very smoothly. Now, the vice president of the Hoteliers Association, uh, Nikos Gakamoulis, uh, stressed that conditions are gradually improving and expressed optimism that things will improve even more with the arrival of the Britons. In general, he said Sylvie is doing better uh, with the English market. Uh, he estimates that the, the market will come together and they'll see a between a 60 to 70 percent recovery uh, once uh, the Brits arrive. <clears throat> anyway, he said most of the hotels work with the British and the market has slumped. The arrivals of the British have not increased yet, but from other markets, we are doing well. They said mainly from the Polish and the German markets, which was interesting, and in general uh, from other areas of Europe. Uh, we also he said we have several Czechs and Dutch. Uh, we've had a good flow uh, of individual customers, and this all creates a, a good, um, a good. What's the word? <laughs> good conditions is how he describes it. He says uh, great efforts are being made in Sylvie by the local council, businessmen, and also the residents uh, who do what they can uh, to keep the area protected. However, the authorities, and he's talking about the municipality here. 
they have in their eyes in Sylvie not shown any support at all uh, for the efforts that these other groups are trying to do here they said that the uh, president of the uh, hoteliers association for the uh, area said uh, businessmen and residents help financially and have taken the effort but the problem is that they should have been uh, solved there is not a single cleaning worker obviously they're finding that nobody is obviously going to clean the roads or clean the streets and uh, obviously as well uh, there is problems in that area as well also they're saying as well that um, there is problems with water and water shortages in Sylvie and they're saying that uh, they expect the municipality the demos uh, to be more proactive in getting this situation sorted and Sylvie is not the only location that's reporting water shortages various um, uh, various villages here in Zakynthos are reporting the same so once again if you are on holiday just be a little bit aware about your water uh, you see the tankers driving up and down putting water into the systems around the areas uh, which is the way of life here uh, but please in some ways uh, try not to waste the water too much all right <laughs> okay um also as well for those people living on the island the uh, bank of Piraeus employees association uh, they're making a series of interventions to uh, local government here bodies uh, for the impending shrinkage uh, that the banks bar the sorry the banks uh, network system is undergoing at the moment the Piraeus bank is now announcing of closures of branches around the country we're also expected to see a closure of the branch here on the seafront in town as uh, they start to shrink down uh, the business now uh, they're also saying that um, the announcement issued by the association emphasizes that banks must highlight their social and economic role in the region of the development of the country and prevent the conditions uh, of, uh, of banking exclusion to a lot of the population basically what they're saying by closing branches it means uh, especially for a lot of the older people who are not au fait of doing things online um, that the obviously the branch themselves is where they want to go in speak to a person and obviously do their banking transactions etc with a human being but again as always with everything doesn't matter where you are in the world all the banks are running the same everything online everything on a call center everything on an app or on a card uh, and again specifically uh, people losing their jobs and obviously being made redundant from banks anyway uh, more Pacific announcements are to follow they said the association has started an ongoing campaign to prevent what is called the sunrise plan uh, uh, which details the announcements which started in early May in which uh, they're seeing the closure of about 75 branches throughout the country and also a uh, cutting of around about 2,000 staff as well and I know we're looking to see that the and I was quite surprised that the branch on the seafront would be the one that would be earmarked for closure because it is a bigger location uh, for people going in and out to do their business um, whereas the other branch of the Piraeus Bank which is uh, up uh, around by the little square um, on the corner where Mythos Grill House is uh, I expected that one to be the one that closed it was would be closed uh, because one it's the newer of the two banks and uh, it obviously is a lot smaller so maybe that's a little, uh, case of things to come anyway uh, more information on vaccines at the moment the latest vaccine jointly developed by the pharmaceutical company Samf Sampho I think is pronounced and the Galaxo Smith Klein has entered evaluations by the European Medicines Agency uh, uh, the fifth vaccine currently uh, being assessed by EU authorities. Uh, it's in clinical trials, the vaccine, and it has shown it produces some strong immune response against the COVID-19 virus. So again, it looks like there'll be another uh, vaccine on the way for those that want the vaccine. And finally, today is a very important day in Greek history, recent Greek history. Uh, Greeks have always had this passionate affair with uh, Macedonia. And even during the war in the darkest hours, when uh, that area was under occupation by German forces, uh, Greeks in Greece, so we say, uh, still uh, would campaign uh, against the Germans, against measures being taken against the Macedonian 
people. Now, it seems this day is very significant, the 22nd of July, because in 1943, there was a massive protest that took place uh, in Athens against German plans uh, to expand the Bulgarian occupation zone uh, into Macedonia. Now, in early July 1943, Adolf Hitler asked the Bulgarian government to extend its occupation zone to encompass additional areas of Greece. Now, Bulgaria had already officially annexed parts of Macedonia and France on the 14th of May uh, 1941 with the invasion. Anyway, a massive campaign of colonization was launched, which saw all Greek officials, mayors, school teachers, judges, lawyers, priests, and also police uh, being deported. A ban was also placed on the use of the Greek language and the names of towns uh, were changed into Bulgarian names. Now, the town of Saris, uh, the branch of the National Bank of Greece, was renamed the National Branch of Bulgaria. In addition, the Bulgarian government tried to alter the ethnic composition of Macedonia by expirating land and houses from Greeks in favour of Bulgarian settlers. And by the introduction of forced labour and economic restrictions uh, for Greeks in an effort basically to force them to migrate. So basically uh, a bit of ethnic cleansing uh, was going on as we call it now. Anyway, the the altercation of the uh, epidemiology composition in eastern Macedonia and France was already in the process by March of 1941 before the invasion of the Bulgarian armed forces. Faced with the spectre of prospective uh, Bulgarian invasion, uh, Greeks began streaming mainly into the rest of Greece uh, from France and also going over to Turkey as well. Um, this wave swelled and after the invasion of Bulgaria, uh, uh, the Bulgarian army uh, came into the country on the 20th of April 1941. Now, upon receiving the news that Bulgaria would further expand its occupation in Macedonia, uh, Greeks became infuriated. A protest strike was called on July the 13th in Athens and proved highly successful, uh, paralysing the city completely for about 24 hours. There were similar protests organised in Thessaloniki and smaller uh, cities across northern Greece. Now, a second general strike was organised uh, for the 22nd of July, uh, which rallied between 100,000 and 300,000. Some sources say the numbers may have even gone as high as 400,000, and that was taking place in central Athens. Now, this massive crowd attempted to march uh, from Ammonia Square, uh, to Sactana Square, uh, and they came upon barricades that were erected by German army units and also Italian cavalry and also Greek collaboration police as well. Now, the protesters were set upon by the occupying forces. Uh, protesters were fired upon during their attempts to breach the barricades and were forced to withdraw, leaving behind 22 dead and uh, several hundred who were severely wounded. Now, workers and university students participated in large numbers in the protests uh, for Macedonia. Several of them were killed and being either run over by armoured vehicles or being fired upon as well. Now, among them, uh, there was a, a lady called Paniotta Stavapula and also Kula Lili. And these two women are remembered even today and uh, as uh, some of the uh, heroes of uh, that uprising on the 22nd of July uh, here in Greece. Anyway, soon after the protests, it then uh, became apparent to uh, Hitler uh, to take a change of tack and uh, they basically said uh, they postponed uh, their proposals to try and change the makeup of uh, Macedonia from Greek influence uh, rather than Bulgarian influence. So that their action did have a severe effect, I think, on the morale of the German forces, definitely the morale on the Bulgarian uh, Axis forces as well, and uh, another victory uh, against uh, tyranny, as it were, uh, by the people. So again, interesting day today. I never knew any of that history uh, until this morning. So there you go. Right, let's have a quick look, see who's tuning in at the moment. Uh, big shout out to Steve Hodson, Northern Soul Man. Nice to see you looking in, sir. Uh, Bernard Loftus as well up there in Sylvie. Nice to see you looking in, Bernard. I hope you are well. Uh, Soul Andy is watching as well. Uh, Soul Andy's been talking to people. 
people in the chat area as well, which is nice to see. Uh, Yvonne Moreau is tuning in as well. Uh, Cy Grindley, uh, ex Rapper Edge buddy over there in Wendover in Buckinghamshire looking in. Dave Richardson as well. Nice to see another Rapper Edge buddy uh, looking in, checking up on the old boy. Uh, also, Danielle Rogers, our entertainer as well. Uh, still no word with entertainment, live entertainment at the moment. Um, I'm not even going to go into it because it's very complicated what's been going on. Uh, as soon as you get one little bit of paperwork signed, sealed, stamped and delivered, oh, they want another little bit of paperwork signed, sealed, stamped and delivered. And it's just adding to the confusion. It's adding to the annoyance. And it's also making life very, very difficult for entertainers here at the moment. I feel very privileged in what I do that I am still able to work. But there are many entertainers here. And I was speaking to quite a few last night who came by the bar last night. Big shout out to Dino and Brian and a few other people that popped by as well. Uh, again, about the situation and the confusion that's going around. If it's all cultural and it's outdoors, it seems to go on. No trouble at all. Indoors, and that's the point, indoors, uh, there is restrictions. And um, again, uh, we want to get back to providing more entertainment at Magdalena's. But at the moment, our hands are tied until uh, ratification of the rules. Uh, because the thing is, you'll only find out whether you're breaking the rules is when they turn up and they start to go through and then they'll tell you, oh, you've done this wrong, you've done that wrong. And then obviously uh, you've then got to argue about it in a court. Uh, but anyway, so at the moment, at the end of the day, for those people asking about entertainment, uh, yeah, it, it, it's slowly getting sorted. And I do feel for those people here at the moment who are waiting to go back to work, who have over rehearsed now. We just want to get in front and do it in front of people. They want to make sure that when they come into a venue and they come to work, they're not going to end up getting fined. Uh, also, the venue is also not going to end up getting fined. And the worst thing on top of the fine is being closed down for seven to ten days as well, which we don't want. Anyway, Amelia Shanti is looking in as well. Barbara Telfer. Uh, Stacey Jackson says, I'm on the easy jet going home. Oh, bless you. I hope you had a good holiday, Stacey. Yeah, well, you popped in to see me, didn't you? I think I remember you coming in the other night. Anyway, I hope you had a great time and you're off on your way home. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be meeting people today at the airport uh, who are coming and arriving. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to bang it on the head there. Big shout out to Shane Bowen as well up there on Exmoor, uh, who's tuning in. Uh, cheers for all your support with the shows, mate. Um, once again, tonight, it's me back in the back in the venue. Can I just say last night, I, I've got to be honest, I, I've been on an absolute blast DJ uh, these last two nights and fingers I've probably jinxed it now but everybody seems to be happy people are loving the music people are fascinated by the video element I mean some people only realize well hang on a minute what's on the screen is the music that we're hearing oh wow this is cool and so that is working just phenomenally well uh, unfortunately uh, the live streaming at the moment is just turning into an absolute nightmare uh, I'm get I'm not able to access as many platforms for replies uh, that's another thing so some people are thinking why is ginger not talking to me like he would do if he's broadcasting from studio one i'm just not set up to multiply platforms to see people looking in all the different areas and so it's a little bit hit and miss but again i do appreciate your comments i do understand you really enjoy looking in and watching what's going on uh, but at the moment the internet it's just shocking it is i can't describe how shocking it is and talking to people last night uh, who are either trying to work here because they decided to be one of those offline workers who are again pulling their hair out because they said well I'm trying to do four hours a day online work and it's really really difficult uh, and especially up in the Sylvie area it's even more difficult and they're driving around trying to find somewhere with a reasonable internet access sit there drinking coffee all day or for four hours and do their work there but anyway, we shall wait and see what goes on. Thank again for all these people sending little messages to me. I'm going to have to go because I've got things to do today. I've got people to meet. And uh, obviously, oh, and by the way, uh, that little problem I had with uh, getting stuff onto YouTube, I had got uh, the day before yesterday's uh, news report up onto YouTube. I'll get yesterday's up onto YouTube. I'll get today's up onto YouTube uh, because managed to fix the glitch 
uh, in the system uh, where I would get the show, I would rip basically my broadcast to put it on onto YouTube, and then that'll put the continuity back there. And uh, for those people who like to watch the show uh, via YouTube, and again, if you haven't looked at it on YouTube, go to YouTube, like and subscribe, get the little channel to grow there. It'd be nice. Right, I've got to go now. Uh, again. My days don't stop, and my nights don't stop either. When is there time to sleep? Well, I didn't go to bed till five o'clock this morning, but that's, that's by the by. But anyway, I'll see you guys, and uh, you have a great day. I'll keep my ear to the ground, and if I hear anything, trust me, you'll be the first to know. Ta-ra.